Mm -hmm. And if that's an argument for keeping it out of the architecture of the internet itself and instead you know, putting the onus on individual sites to track these things, then what you're going to end up happening is that, I mean, that puts a severe transactions cost on the decision to host a website. You know, un unless you, you know, I mean, there'll be third party actors like, you know, like TypePad that, you know, that, that, that exist and can step in to sort of to track commenter, ide you know, identity. But otherwise, you know, mm. you need to have, you, you know, mm -hmm. you know, the resources, you know, to keep all of this user information on your site in addition to everything else. And also obviously raises the transaction cost of even deciding to comment if you have to register and give your full identity. Uh, there's no good answer to this. Well, I, I have a feeling we may come back to it. Yeah. I hope to save a little time for Q&A from the audience. Yeah. And uh, no question. Can, this I just, is, can I just add, yeah. add one small yeah. thing? Yeah. So let's be very clear about what the architectural yeah. solution has to look like. Because it doesn't have to be that we have to register and give all your identity, yeah. right? The architectural solution would make it so that you could go to a site, um, admit uh, you know, whatever site you want. Yeah. And if the architecture were done right, you could give your pseudonymous identity. And yeah. that's it. Right? Exactly. And, then, and then, of course, if you do something libelous or slanderous, then uh, a court might be able to say, I need to know who that person is. But otherwise, you wouldn't be required to turn anything over. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the advantage of that is it avoids the world we've got right now, which is, a, which is a privacy disaster, because you're forced to give all sorts of private data in all sorts of different contexts where you have no reliable control over what happens to that data. Well, it's worse. There's a 16-year-old from, I think, I forget if it's Indiana. I just saw this yesterday. Someone forwarded me a, a video uh, who has been arrested under the Patriot Act uh, and hauled off, and his mother can't even reach him. Uh, and uh, he's being held because they think his, they traced uh, bomb threats and so on to his IP address. Yeah. And they believe it was hijacked. Someone has taken over his IP address. But, you know, because it's Patriot Act, it's, it's actually yeah. uh, the recourse there is very troubling. Um, Okay, I, I want to shift us uh, onto a different terrain, which is, so we've heard about some of the positive effects of uh, the internet, the small donor revolution that's beginning to take hold, um, lowering the cost of communication, uh, perhaps making it easier to expose and, and track down, uh, you know, the corrupting influences. Um, let's, let's indulge in a thought experiment. What if... Should government be taking more proactive steps uh, to expand this space in a variety of ways? I'll give you one example. Uh, uh, this comes from uh, Brad Templeton, the, the chairman of the Electronic Frontier Foundation. He says, if the cost of, uh, if campaigns are, are driven by the need to raise money to communicate with voters, which is being driven by the high cost of television, if we can find other ways to make it easy to communicate with voters, that don't involve those high costs, then maybe we can reduce, you know, take away some of the demand. Uh, so his proposal is that when every uh, uh, body, you know, when, it, when you turn 18, uh, you know, the government should like give you an e email address, or when you register to vote, collect your email address, and then offer those email addresses to uh, candidates, you know, at whatever level, at, to have the ability to communicate directly with voters. Maybe you limit the number of times they can email before a person says, unsubscribe me. Um, is that a crazy idea? I mean, are there things that we should be doing to expand, uh, you know, if, if, uh, public participation that we aren't doing here? Or should the government just stay out of this? Well, I, I think the first thing is the government would never have thought about the innovative, creative things that, in fact, have happened without the government. So that's pretty good evidence mm -hmm. that there's not much good the government would do here. Um, but I do think that there's, there's important things to happen to expand access. One of the important things that's got to happen is the growth of the free software movement in political campaigns, right? So um, people like uh, Aaron Swartz, who obviously works with you and works with me, um, been critical in, in developing free software to help facilitate the running of campaigns. Uh, um, and, and that is a, in contrast to even progressives who have devoted enormous amounts of money to building these software packages that campaigns and political sites okay. need, but still are proprietary so that you know, it's extremely expensive to use them to do the sort of basic functionality that sure. you should be able to do. If, if we could push towards a broader access to tools, and free software would do that. But, um, th this would go a long I'm way. Sorry, but, but you're dodging my question, which is that the, I mean, look, we weren't government, supposed to say that. I, yeah, but uh, sorry, but the government <laughs> now 
uh, plays a role in civic life by registering people to vote, right? Um, I mean, well, why aren't we talking... it doesn't even do that. It allows people well, to... Well, it allows people to vote. I mean, yeah. but why aren't we talking about ways that the Internet can facilitate uh, greater participation and reduce reliance on money? And so... Um, I agree with you. I mean, there are other ways to reduce the cost of... So, but what I said... So yeah, here, sure. here's how I wasn't dodging your question, right? Okay. What I said was, I have little faith that the government's going to do much good there. I would have much more uh, hope that, you know, spreading free software in this space would do good to increase right. participation Right, but you do have faith in, in government with, with public financing, so... No, obviously. well, you know, so I hope you're going to uh, see hear Bruce Ackerman talk about his version of public financing, which I think actually goes a long way to getting the government out of mm. having a role in setting public financing. So I'm not necessarily wedded to the particular New Deal-ish like way that we've got public finance being spoke of right now. But I want to try to avoid as much as possible. I want to be as you know, deregulatory as is possible in this space. Okay. Um, so you know, the, the idea of giving every candidate email addresses, well, you know, they pretty much have them now. I, I, I don't know if it's a huge gain. The yeah, huge I mean, gain I mean, would okay. be... Well, campaigns can buy them. I mean, it, you know, let, let's focus on the... You know, let's build the highways. You know, let us you know, expand broadband for all, let's get free laptops into, into as many people's hands as possible so that, you know, so that more voters can access the stuff that's out there and engage in participatory mm -hmm. democracy. I mean, that, you, you know, you know build, build the roads and, 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 and let people drive on them, I, I, I think it is a much better solution than, you, you know, than anything that sort of directly enables candidates. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Empower voters, you know, in, well, personally, and I, in a better economy, give them the time to, you know, yeah, to access yeah. these Actually, things. Actually, I, I, look, I agree with both of you. I'm, I'm, my personal view of this is that when we turn, you know, when somebody yeah. comes of age, um, that, you know, it wouldn't be a bad thing if the same way you can open an online banking account, that you can open an online citizenship account, and that you, where, where all this data that the government is making available, or that is beginning yeah. to make available, I could, ha I could, see my tax return if I want to see my tax return. I could see my social security account. I could access information of interest to me uh, that is being provided by the government and maybe it would also tell me where my polling place is and how to uh, uh, contact my representative. Those are things that, you know, those are services that I think would, would also expand yeah. participation in, in yeah. meaningful ways. I mean, universal voter registration is something that needs to happen. It is absolutely silly that it's up to private actors, you know, to, to prod voters <coughs> to get themselves yeah. registered. That's where you wind up with all these, you know, you know problems or pseudo problems with, with, with groups like ACORN. You know, the same government that, that finds me every year before April 15th can find everybody when they turn 18 and say, hi, you're registered to vote now. This is where you go to vote. Uh, th there's no reason why this can't happen as a form of voter participation. At the same time, I want to take seriously what, what, what Jake has tweeted and, uh, Try to try to bring this back to campaign finance because because we're talking about <laughs> yeah. See, I've got, I've got the good seed here. I can actually yeah, you watch can actually all this. See what you